What's up all you snazzy engineers? You look great. Welcome back to the channel. Here's another quick one, a real passionate topic at Dimension Software with technology we love to employ. We've been doing it for years, Elixir, and how to use it on the front end. Roll it. Let's get started guys with a little history on this one. Way well back, maybe six, seven years ago, we'd flown the entire Dimension Software team out to St. Louis for Strange Loop just to see Jose Valium, the man, the master behind Elixir, speak himself. Uh, at the time, we were very jazzed on what would be forthcoming. Uh, at the, at, you know, then we were using Erlang considerably. We had uh, kind of a routine chat server that was serving millions of customers daily, you know, just kind of real time. Uh, and we were very keen as Rubius then uh, to see kind of where this was all driving. Let's do something a little bit different with this one and talk about what nobody really talks about, which is Elixir on the front end. Everyone already knows the benefits of immutable data structures, concurrency, massively distributed systems, and how they can be beneficial. Let's talk about the other side, right? The front end and where Elixir is driving today and what gets us stoked and excited to use it. Uh, one of the big kind of aha moments that came out of Phoenix, which is that Rails-like framework that's on top of Elixir that everyone talks about, uh, is live views. Uh, this is getting us super jazzed because as most engineers know, it's a lot simpler to not have to deal with the JavaScript fatigue, to just deal with everything from the server up, and live views lets us do this in real time over a WebSocket super efficiently. Amazing. There's tons of great videos and literature out there online. We're not going to harp so much onto live views specifically. Let's talk a little bit about what we would love to see in the future coming from live views. One really peachy keen topic, something that we've addressed in other videos and we'll link down in the description below is Svelte. And one thing that Svelte really does well is it integrates every single thing into one component right? The look of it, the logic behind it, and kind of everything top to bottom, all consolidated in one nice little component structure. It'd be really sweet to do this with live views too. What do I mean by that? Specifically allowing for, you know, CSS, maybe it's SCSS, some kind of a preprocessor or whatever to be wrapped around that live view so that we can really have first class animations, you know, first class effects, and really just kind of have them all in the same place, right? Uh, Svelte does this, again, super nice to see. At the end of the day, especially as projects grow, it's great not just to have the encapsulation and to know that, you know, for example, some niceties come out of this, like not clobbering uh, CSS selectors from other areas of the project. You know, when projects become quite large, this can be a nightmare. Uh, but, you know, if we could kind of distill it all into one place, into one live view, the CSS with the animation classes, all the transitions and the effects with that live view component would be super sweet. Uh, also on the horizon, you know, what sort of befalls us with WebAssembly? We're really keen on following this. A lot of engineers we talk to are kind of buzzing about WebAssembly and where we think that it's gonna serve a key interest in the future is probably in the Elixir world. Right now, there are a couple different options to take Elixir and bring it to the front end, right? There's kind of the Elixir script route, which it's gonna be really hard to maintain that one. And you know, there's been a lot of effort behind doing this, but it's always kind of playing catch up. It's not probably the best technique to do it, but what really is gonna change the game is WebAssembly. And what that might look like is isomorphic Elixir components that can run on the server and on the client. You know, same code. This is something we take very much for granted with Node.js. It's one of those really big uh, performance, you know, from, from like a time perspective, a very big time saving thing, uh, you know, having the isomorphic components that can run on either the front end or the back end in a similar environment. You know, Node.js benefits from this massively. It's JavaScript from top to bottom. We don't get that benefit with Elixir and it'd be super sweet if we could. WebAssembly might get us there it's very much on the horizon. It's nothing that's probably usable in a production setting now, uh, but we're very peachy keen on this. Like I said, 
uh, we really have our eyes forward sight to see where this technology drives and where it's going to end up. Maybe towards the end of 2020, it's going to start looking a little bit more reasonable. Uh, I think that it's still pretty far out, but again, the next big step for Elixir on the front end, you know, we have the live views, we love the live views. There's obviously some little things that we can do to improve the live views by, you know, bringing some of the CSS and some of the kind of front endy stuff down into those live views, more first class, uh, but very forward thinking on the horizon, WebAssembly, well, let's see where we end up at the end of 2020 and where the kind of landscape stands then. It could be extremely exciting for Elixir. We very much welcome that. We have our eyes, like I said, uh, not a whole lot of guests beyond you know, what I can tell you today, but uh, the technology is emerging and let's see where we end up in a year. Thanks for listening. Catch you on the next one. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave your comments below. We love reading them, all of them. Yes, even the one you're about to leave.